Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and uh, your eyes aren't deceiving you. If you think you're working on a big reel today, we are working on a big reel today. This is an Ocean City one. It's the last of the ones that uh, Kevin had sent in to me. This is a 90, number 609, Ocean City Big Game Reel. Of course, I had to do a little bit of uh, research on this one before I got started. And the first catalog I found that this one was uh, in was in uh, 1950. It could be in the earlier ones, I'm not sure, but 1950 for certain. And it sold for $35. So $35 in 1950 was a pretty big deal. That was a fairly expensive reel. And I don't know what Kevin paid for today, but uh, just a little bit of history on it. And uh, we're going to take this one apart, and we're going to show you how it was made, how to service it, and uh, make sure that it can keep going fishing for some time to come. So I'm going to start with a couple of things that are uh, generally seem to be my uh, introductions. I wear a protective glove on my hand where I can to keep the, the chemicals and oils and dirts and greases off. I use a parch tray, which is the bottom of a milk jug in this case. I've been known to use fast food containers and other things. And uh, I also like to start by thanking our first responders, our uh, essential personnel, our healthcare professionals, law enforcement, emergency <coughs> responders, excuse me, and others that are trying to keep us out of harm's way during the pandemic. All you do is appreciate it, and uh, we couldn't be here trying to recover from this without uh, without you. Thank you. All right, so you saw that I took the wrench off, which is embedded in the handle. It's held on by the screw here. And once you have that off, you can loosen the, the handle screw, and you can take that off. Boy, is that some big old leverage handle there. Big handles for big reels, I guess. All right, screw comes out. That goes into my parts tray. The wrench I don't need any longer so that'll come out. You can take the handle off by pulling upwards. I, I generally like to loosen the star adjuster and push the handle up just because it makes it easier and then we can remove that star adjuster. Star adjuster's got a little bit of junk on it so I'm just going to take a piece of steel wool and, and that has some residual polish on it. I'm just going to take that to clean off the Chunk on that side, and we have a little bit in the back side here. So that looks like it's just general dirt that's collected there. I'm going to put a squirt of penetrating oil on that. Q-tip, cotton swab. I'll just clean that channel out there so that uh, it doesn't interfere with the real operation later. And a paper towel just to get the rest of that off there. And a quick cleanup, but you should get rid of the dirt if you can. Dirt's the enemy of a reel, and that's as simple as that. It'll go a long way. All right. Now, the last reel I did, uh, for Kevin had one of these assemblies as well. This allows you to service the drag stack without taking the reel plate off. I think it's an ingenious design. Unfortunately, sometimes, well, in this case it does. It comes right out. How do you like that? So this is a self-contained uh, drag assembly stack. This is, probably has the older washers in it. I'm just going to set this aside. We'll show you how to clean that up later. But you'll notice that there's two prongs in the back of that main gear. There's two prongs on the back of this. They slide in and it's a beautiful thing as they like to say. All right, let's take the, uh, the rest of this reel apart so that we can service the internals. I've got a lot of parts in one tray, so I'm actually going to use another tray right here to put these pieces in. There's a whole bunch of screws here. There's two sets of levers here for the harness, whether you want to harness to the front or the back. This has a beautiful old harness on it with a leather strap that uh, kind of goes over that one bow section there, where you would hold the rod. A nice way to not uh, not damage the rod. And then there's one set of long bars here. So if you took everything apart, just know that the long bars belong together. Be 
because if you mix them up, you're not going to get a flush fit for your harness lug, which just fell out there. <laughs> put that on my tray as well. And then there's three screws that hold on the reel seat. Big reels. But interestingly enough, I believe when we take the inside of that off, you're going to see the same basic design for, that you'll see with an Ocean City reel that's as small as, say, the 112. They, uh, they found a proven design, they stayed with it. The difference on these is the, the drag stack is independent. I like that. All right, so let's grab the, all the screws are out now. We should be able to pull that side plate out. And generally speaking, yep. This is almost identical to the, the reel I did earlier for um, for Kevin. So uh, there's a couple of diff little differences to note, so let's go ahead and note them. One of them is that you have a swing clip here that's holding the jack on. If you want to just back it off a little bit. You don't have to take the screw out completely, just enough that it swings off to the side. As you can see the, the hook on that. Once you do that, then hold this assembly. You don't want it flying anywhere. And then you can generally just kind of work work yourself up to get that out of there. You need a little assist, try a screwdriver or something to bring it up. Like that. And then you can pull it out by pulling it backwards. I shouldn't be stuck there, but I am. I'm not clearing. There's a uh, there's a little spring that needs to clear here. So I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to take this piece out here, just so I don't damage anything. This reel's old, of course. As I mentioned, I saw it in the catalog in 1950, which means it's older than me. Gee whiz. All right. Now I think we probably, yep, when you pull that up, you move that stud, then you can pull all this out. Just like that. This hook is getting caught on this spring here. All right, with that out, then you can remove the yoke. Big gear. I don't know what the gear ratio is. I'm going to take that whole piece out there. We want to get down to cleaning the gears and lubing them, so that's what this is all about. You don't have to take this other one. Well, now you do have four bridge screws here. Let's go ahead and take them out. Those are big. I'm just going to put them together in one side of my parts tray there to hold them down. But a, a thoughtful design here and a big game design and very heavy parts. So anybody who's got this reel should feel good about having it. Obviously, this one's endured quite some time now, and I don't see any reason why this one can't go fishing and catch a lot more fish for years to come. All right, we can push that through now. You want to clean the case. I use a penetrating wireless general cleaner there. Helps to kind of melt away some of the old, uh, old greases. Use a paper towel. I'd like to wear a glove on my working hand. It's just me and that glove is just not cut along. And I don't know, again, back to my first responders, I don't have these folks stay in face shields all day, gloved up and trying to keep everything safe with that personal protective equipment. But I do admire it. All right. Cleaned up nicely. There's a bushing on both sides here. Let's make sure that side plate's nice and clean, which it is. You can set that off in a moment. Big old spool here, beautiful, nice and clean. That's a testimony to the types of metals they used back in the day, so to speak. Just thinking from the steel wool, which is off to the side. There's no reason why I shouldn't take a moment here. It's kind of got up some of the twinish there. Just do a 
general cleaning. And then a paper towel just to wipe it down. And in this case, it's a good thing the line's off. A lot of folks like to leave the line on for no particular reason. And uh, all that, that can do is have a detrimental effect over time. Uh, there's a lot of these reels that come in heavily salted and corroded because the line was left on. And I don't recommend that. Take it off, it's cheap. Even in large quantities like this. Okay, there's a pin that holds the gear sleeve on. I'm just trying to poke that out. If you can't poke it out, what you want to do is use a soft blow hammer. I'm using a little kind of a punch here, but it's it doesn't take much. Just every now and then it just doesn't want to come out by itself. And sometimes you may need to grab that little ledge there to pull it the rest of the way out if your punch doesn't reach all the way through. That's a pin that's going to retain the gear sleeve through the bridge and you want to make sure you got it out from there. There's some dirt and grease and grime in there. Put that in the bucket before it rolls off somewhere. Clean off all that old grease. If you find that there's something heavier, use steel wool. In this case it's just tarnish, it's not uh, not corrosion or anything. Make sure you clean underneath. That's why you take that pin off. This is the anti-reverse dog sitting here. It's connected by a spring underneath here. If you lose the spring, uh, or if you start playing around with that anti-reverse dog, know that the spring is on the other side and that you need to disconnect it in this case. You don't need to remove that to do the service, and we're not going to. I grab my brush. Nice new set of lubrication in there. Check the gear sleeve, it's fine. The hard washer underneath is okay. There's a little bit of dirt underneath here. Just wipe that clear. Again, testimony to the metals used, right? What a beautiful piece. It's not even worn where that uh, dog slaps in. All right, take the gear sleeve. This is how you set your anti-reverse dog now. You pull your dog out so that it can work that way and you'll see as you crank it, it's operating fine. It's one hot, one heavy duty piece of metal here. All right, so check the teeth, make sure they're all clear, they are. Put a good amount of grease into those channels. You don't have to you know, glob it on or anything, but make sure that every now and then you, you got it down there because the dimensions of the Pinion gear and the main gear are different. You don't have to worry about it spreading around, it will. And then snap that back on. And that's your gear service. Give it a give it a spin, make sure everything's working properly, which it is. And that gear can go get reinstalled right now. So let's get it off the desk. And just put that right back in. I find that the sooner you can work on the pieces, the better your memory is of where those pieces came from and the, uh, the easier it is when it comes time to reinstall. So I'm going to grab four of these, get them set and, and turn them in. Make sure when you're doing this that you're using the right screwdriver for the slot. Obviously, you can't use one that's too big, but you can use one that's too small. And if you try to lever anything with a blade that's too small, you risk damaging that screw. And given that these things are as old as they are and parts not being available, that's certainly something that you want to take into consideration and treat accordingly. All right, that takes care of this piece. Let's go over to the back for a moment. There's a little bit more residual salt or something on here, so I'm just going to grab a scrubber for a moment, see if I can't clean some of that up. A little bit of, there's a little bit of metal polish just to clean that. It'd be a shame while you have the spool out not to, not to address this. 
So a little bit of uh, chrome polish, a little piece of steel wool, and that generally will get whatever that tarnish is off of there. Doesn't take much. I think you saw in the other video we used some Flitz metal polish to uh, restore the, uh, the other reel. You can use that if you like. There's some grease traveling in this circle here, so I'm going to grab that and get that out of there. I'm going to take my brush again and we're going to load up on this side, the bushing. And then we can grab our spool, insert that and get that out of the way. Alright, back to the main gear then. And the assembly. Next up then would be the servicing of the spool gear. Want to get any excess Pieces and the like off of this. There's a carrier on the spool gear. Make sure that you have the orientation so that the plus sign, if you will, or the cross faces out. That's going to intersect with the, the two studs on the main spool. Do the same thing with your, your spool gear or pinion gear. And just make sure that those channels are clean. They are. These are very dry. And uh, then just load it up with grease again. And again, because the, the diameter of the pinion gear and the main gear is different, all of that grease will spread around pretty quickly. I'll take that. You want to get your grease onto your yoke. Put your carrier in. Just like that. And I like just get a little bit into that groove on the carrier so that it spreads nice, runs evenly. And then you can put your assembly together. And here's what, this is the piece we were tripping over before with the, um, with the jack. So we're just going to start a basic install here the way we took it out. Most of the time you don't have to move that piece. The, the post here, but occasionally you do, and that's what we did here. So I'm going to grab the post and the screw for the post. I'm just going to leave it, just get it started. I'll let it run high. We'll put the springs on both. Then we can take the assembly, press down on the springs on both sides of this to seat that properly. So that you can get your, your grooves. And remember, I got that one side loose there, but And then you want to align your stud on your, your advance so that it slots down. And now I'm going to move to tighten the piece up again. And then check for operation because sometimes when you tighten that down, this will. I'll rotate that slot a little bit, make it more difficult, and we have the we have the right clearance on it. That's good. And then put a little bit of grease just where it's going to ride in that slot there. Take that little hook, rotate that around so that it slides in. Tighten this down, and then we're on to the drag service once we install the side plate again. So grab your side plate. You want to get some grease onto the spool's main shaft. I find if you move your 
free spool to the off position, it's easier to line the holes. We mentioned that you have two sides with the harness lugs. So what we want to do is we want to start by going to the one that doesn't have a harness lug just to get it centered. So I'm going to put one where we have the long screw, uh, long crossbar. I'm not going to tighten it all the way down because there is some play. I'm going to grab a short screw and I'm going to put that in the middle hole for the real seat. for the lug. Get that one started. Grab another one of those. And the other lug is on the harness itself. So move your, make sure you're not uh, tangled. Move your lugs over. Tighten it all the way down because you got to set the other side as well. And once you get one and then the other seated, then go ahead and tighten it down. And put the rest of the screws in now. You've got a, a stable case now. And the beauty of a, uh, a parts tray is letting you know when you've got everything done. And interestingly enough, I'm looking at my parts tray and I didn't put the pin back into the gear sleeve. But that's okay because the gear sleeve with this design has, you have access to it right there. Interesting that I see both right as we go. Here's that pin. Let's get that in. Those of you at home sitting there going, I did it again. Sorry. Parts tray paid off. Let's see if we can get it in from the other side. to pull that in sometimes. You could try tapping it in if you wanted to. Notice I didn't bang it, just the light tap. And I use the beak of the pliers just to pull it in that last little bit. All right. Now I feel better about that. Next up then is the drag stack. We have a bell washer and a flat washer. 
then we have these cork washers in, in between here. Just want to make sure that you're clean inside. And again, because we have that steel, we might as well go ahead and polish the, the other piece. And it's just amazing how this stuff has stood the test of time. All right, the inside channel is clean. The outside is clean. This has a three, three uh, traditional setup. It has the keyed washer, geared washer, keyed washer in between the fabrics. It has the top washer and the bell washer. These are cork. You could put a little bit of gr grease or oil on them if you want, just to keep them flexible. Next up then is the, the main. Let's see if we can just put that right on there. Looks like we're tight on that one piece there with the that little stud. I usually tell everybody put that stud in, but then don't do it myself. All right, this is a good time to lock this in. Make sure that the those two studs get into the uh, the two rings and the or two holes in the main gear. First one up is a keyed washer. Second one. Put a little bit of oil on that. Geared washer. Isn't this a beautiful thing in design that you don't have to pull your whole reel apart to service your drags? All right, flat washer, bell washer. And it's time for a test drive. Big old star adjuster. Every now and then these spin, what I do when they spin, I get a Phillips head which has got just kind of a rounded piece to it, just to put pressure onto that. I don't want to put anything in there that's going to destroy those threads. And then I can use the handle the rest of the way in terms of getting that star adjuster down. And of course this handle's still got some stuff on it here, so let's go ahead and all we can. Clean that up, both sides. And it's worth taking the time to do it. We're ready. Handle goes on. Now if you didn't take that gear sleeve off, you could put oil in there right now. But since we did, it's not needed. Handle nut, I like to get those started by hand if I can. I'll go ahead and use the wrench when you can no longer do that. And this is, I always give Ocean City credit for this, just simplicity of design. Why go look for a wrench? Why not just include the wrench on the uh, on the handle, and that way, when it's uh, when you need to take it off, it's right there. There you go. So we're tight. A little bit of cleaning up to do there. Our set screw is aligned. Should only be one more piece in the tray, and that's it. It's the set screw. goes down. Alright, we should be in free spool right now, so let's see how that does. It's a, That's a beauty. Let's go ahead and put it over to the drive side so we can bring the fish in. And boy, is that a nice, evenly working reel. Tighten down the drag here, make sure we got drag hold. And we sure do. Back it up so we make sure we got some fighting capacity. We do. And I'm going to leave it off. I recommend leaving the drags off unless you're uh, actually out on, the, out on the water fishing. So that's it. The Ocean City Big Game 609. Made somewhere in the early 1950s and uh, selling for about $35 at the time. All right. So if you've enjoyed that, please like it. If you want to see more, please subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments regardless of uh, with a like. 
If you want to see more of these, please subscribe. It keeps my channel vibrant. And finally, if you have a, repair, a reel that needs repair or service, uh, contact me on the email on the business card that follows. I will be happy to provide you with that information. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.